All right, in this video, we're just going to work with uh, the copy command. And we'll also continue to work with the RM command a little bit. This time, we're going to add options to make those commands just behave a little differently. Uh, we should be in Home Student Downloads over on the right. And again, if I type PWD here, you can see I'm in Home Student Downloads on the left. So pause the video and get yourself set up there if you're comfortable with this type of uh, setup for now. So let's go ahead and create a new file here, just like we did before. I'll call this myfile.txt. I'm going to type ls. And you can see that myfile.txt is there. Let's use the copy command to make a copy of it. So the CP command stands for copy. And I can copy, I can just type the letter M because in downloads, the only thing that matches that is myfile.txt right now. Hit tab, it'll autocomplete. The CP command takes two arguments. It takes the file to be copied and then the place and the name where you want to place it. So in this case, I'm going to say cpmyfile.txt, and I'll call this myfile2.txt. And because I'm not specifying any absolute locations or there are no slashes, it's going to assume that I want to place it in the current or present working directory. So go ahead and hit enter there. You can see we instantly get a new file called myfile2.txt. I type ls, you can see that we now have two copies of that file. Now, the next concept I'd like to introduce is the concept of the dot dot, which allows you to move up from the command line. And here's what I mean by that. If I'm in home student downloads and I want to move up one directory, I can click the up arrow, right? So by clicking the up arrow, I've gone into the student directory. Well, I can do here, I can say change directory, and the command line version of the up arrow is dot dot. Or you could do dot dot slash, it's the same thing. And you're saying go up one directory. If I type ls, you can see once again, we are in the same location. So let's CD back into, so we can see here that in the home student folder, we have downloads and we have documents, two folders that are fairly common. You'll see them on Windows and Linux. Users home folder is generally gonna have those two. It's probably also gonna have a desktop folder. Well, let's CD back into downloads. I'll click into downloads here. And now let's construct a command that's gonna copy my file into how about, the, how about the desktop folder? So I'm in downloads on the right, and I'm in downloads on the left. Now, the only way to really get good at this is to practice. Uh, eventually, it becomes very intuitive and very easy. But I'm going to say CP, and the first argument is the file to be copied. Now, if I type M here and I hit tab, it's going to go to my file, right? Because there are two things that have my file here. We have my file.txt and we have my file2.txt. So if I hit a period, my file period only matches one thing. So I can then continue to hit tab. So we're going to copy my file.txt. And in this case, I want to go up one directory. So there's my dot dot slash. Right now at this time, I'm going to hit the up arrow because I've typed dot dot slash. So we'll hit up arrow. And then we know that in after you go up one directory, there's a folder called desktop. So I'm going to type des tab. And you can see it takes us to desktop. And then I'm going to click into desktop on the right. 
So the command says copy my file.txt from downloads up one folder and into desktop, and we mirrored that over here on the right. So if I go ahead and hit enter now, you can see that my file.txt now shows up in the desktop folder, which incidentally you can now see on your desktop. Great, so let's go ahead and let's change directories now to the desktop folder. There are several different ways we can go about this. I could use an absolute location. I could cd home student desktop, capital D, and that would work. That would take me to home student desktop. You'll notice that after I type cd or cp or rm or anything, if I start the location with a slash, that's an absolute location. That's saying start from the bottom of the file system. You're going to tell it absolutely where to go. Now I'm in the downloads folder, so I could also go CD up one folder and then into desktop. So you can navigate using that dot dot slash or you can type in absolute locations. Just depends on how you want to approach it. Here's the idea though, pause the video and get to the point where your command line on the left is in the desktop folder and your file browser is also in the desktop folder. Okay, so let's use a new command Let's talk MKDIR, makes sense to do that here. MKDIR stands for make directory. And I'm gonna make a directory and I will call this folder one. You'll notice that in the desktop folder, it did create a folder called folder one. So let's try to copy folder one. Let's try to use that same copy command, but this time it's not a file, it's a folder. And uh, cp folder one, and let's call it folder two. So we're saying copy folder one, thing to be copied, place to copy it. We're gonna copy it to folder two, and we're gonna keep it inside a desktop. We're not starting with any slashes or anything. And you'll notice that it says hyphen R is not specified. We're not gonna copy that folder. So what does that R mean? Let's talk about that. That hyphen R stands for recursive. If you do something recursively, you do it over and over again. Now, when you're copying a folder, you're not necessarily just copying that folder, right? A folder could contain many other things. It could contain Go ahead and click into folder one over on the right. Let's create a new folder here. I'll call this folder blue. Let's create a new folder here, another one, and let's call it red. You could use the MKDIR command. You could right click on the right and do it. But now we have a folder called folder one and we have two folders, one called blue, one called red. So if I were to copy folder one and call it folder two, I also need to go into folder one in order to really copy that folder and all of its contents. I would have to copy blue and red into the new folder we're creating. So anytime we're working with folders, if you're trying to delete or trying to copy, it's gonna want you to specify hyphen R or sometimes it's a capital R, just depends. Okay, so I'm gonna move back into desktop and I'm still in desktop here, so let's do that. CP and this hyphen R, so it's called um, a parameter. And commands can, you can put a hyphen like this and you can specify, you can say, I want this command to behave in a certain way. In this case, I want it to behave so that it does what I tell it to do recursively. I wanna copy folder one and I wanna call it folder two. And you can see now we have folder two and because it has recursively copied everything that we created inside of folder one, folder two also contains blue and red. 
The same thing applies for that RM command, that super dangerous RM command, remove. If I try to RM folder two, it'll tell you, can't do it, it's folder. So I'm gonna RM, and I think it's a capital R here, let me try this. Folder two, I'm gonna say recursively remove folder two. This is the super dangerous command because it'll delete a folder and everything in it. But I wanna recursively delete folder two and I wanna go in and delete everything that's inside of folder two as well. And there we go, and in this case the RM command requires a capital R. And so we were able to delete that folder and anything else inside of that folder. You can imagine how dangerous that might be. If you have a folder that's got 10 years worth of pictures in it, you accidentally type rm hyphen r pictures. At this point, you can't recover it. Using that rm command, it didn't go into a recycle bin. So one of the rules of thumb as I end this video is that anytime I type rm and I decide to utilize that hyphen R, I always stop and think. I take a minute, sort of built into my procedures, I look at it and I ask myself, am I absolutely sure that I wanna delete that forever? Most of the time, I'm okay with it because I made the decision to delete it in the first place. So, okay, that's it. Um, in the next video, we'll continue to move forward with uh, more file system basics. Uh, thank you for your time.